Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we have a paid how to play video for Tolerance, which will be seeking funding on a crowdfunding website very soon. You'll be able to find that information in the description below to get you over to that crowdfunding campaign. Tolerance is an asymmetric set collection game with variable player goals for three to five players, representing the conflict between Protestants and Catholics in the 16th and early 17th century England. The game is played over three rounds, spanning the reigns of Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth I, and King James. Now, before I get into how to play Tolerance, I do want to mention our sponsor, StoneValleyGames.com. This is your friendly distant game store. They have all kinds of fantastic stuff over there. They've got old hotness, new classics, new hotness, old classics, everything in between. They have all kinds of cool stuff going on over there. For instance, they have a loyalty program for return customers. If you live in the United States, in the continental United States, and you order $100 or more for them, they'll ship to you for free. And if you're in the U.S. military and you live overseas currently, you're stationed overseas currently at an AA, AE, or AP address, they'll ship to you for free. So be sure to go check them out, stonevalleygames.com. Eric and Wendy really have a great thing going on over there. There's a link in the description below. To set up a game of tolerance, each player takes a player board, a score sheet, and one of the seven roll cards, and a roll card. For the first game, it's recommended that all players choose the symmetric side of the roll card, Bertram the Balanced, but once players are familiar with the game and are ready for a more advanced challenge, the asymmetric side of the roll cards will provide the variable player goals. Also, optionally, players may play with hidden agendas. This means that they will actually keep their role secret from all other players, uh, essentially keeping the Bertram the Balanced side face up, but using the asymmetric side during the game. This means players will not know their opponent's goals and agendas until the end of the game. Let's take a quick look at what the player board contains. The Living Catholic pile will be here the Living Neutral Pile, and the Living Protestant Pile. Then we have the Deceased Catholic Pile, the Deceased Neutral Pile, and the Deceased Protestant Pile. This right here reminds you of Suit Order, and this reminds you of the End of Round Order. Now let's take a look at what you'll find on the cards themselves. In the top right corner, you have the Religious Affiliation, Catholic, Prevailing, or Protestant. In the top left corner, you have the rank 1 through 14. Next to the rank, you have the suit, nobles, clergy, townsfolk, peasants, and wild. This is the piety value. This is the money value. These are effects. Kill, execute, condemn, convert, collect taxes, collect piety, and this is a guild member. Below the effects are their targets. To begin playing the game, first set aside each of the monarchs, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth I, and King James I. Next, shuffle the 69 suit cards. Then, if you're playing with three players, you'll count out 35 of these cards. If you're playing with four players, 47. And if you're playing with five players, 59. So we'll say we're playing with three players. Here's 35 cards. The remaining cards are set aside for the round. Then find the monarch for the current round. In round one, it's Queen Mary. Add the monarch to these cards and shuffle them up one more time. Then deal 12 cards to each player, which means all the cards will be used. The player who was most recently involved in religious activities should choose the starting player, and they can choose themselves. Then on subsequent rounds, the player with the fewest victory points will choose the starting player. If there's a tie, this tie will be broken in favor of the first player clockwise from the starting player of the previous round. Each round will consist of 12 tricks. For each trick, the starting player leads a card. The suit of the lead card, in this case townsfolk, determines the suit of the trick. If a wild card is led, the player must declare which suit the wild card is representing, and this becomes the suit of the trick. 
When the player declares the suit, they may not declare wild as the suit and must choose either nobles, clergy, townsfolk, or peasants. Each other player in clockwise turn order must either play a card of the same suit if they have one. If they don't have a card of the same suit, they may play any suit. It's important to note, though, that if the player can follow suit, they must follow suit. However, even if the player does have the appropriate suit, they could instead choose to play a wild card. When they play the wild card, they then declare what suit that card will be, and they are not obliged to follow suit with that declaration. They could declare it to be any suit. The highest card of the suit led wins the trick. So assuming that this wild card was declared to be townsfolk, then this player would win the trick. It's important to note that no matter what the number is of a card that did not... It's important to note that this player could not win because they did not follow the leading suit. So it's irrelevant that they played a 14. It doesn't matter at all because you can only win a trick with the lead suit. The winner of the trick takes the cards in the trick, applies any end of trick effects, and then places the cards in their respective scoring stacks around their player board. Any card with the prevailing symbol will go into the stack belonging to the prevailing religion of the round. In round one, that would be Catholic. However, in round two, the bar patrons would go into the living neutral pile, and in round three, they would go into the living Protestant pile. The witch hunters, though, would go here regardless of the round, and Henry of France will go here regardless of the round. The winner of the trick now is the first player for the next trick. It should also be noted that cards that are won are kept in piles on the player's board. These piles can be looked through by the player that owns them at any time. However, only the top card is visible to other players, and players are not allowed to look through other players' piles. After each trick you have won, you must apply any end-of-trick effects, and we'll go through the effects near the end of the video. However, just know that these should be resolved in rank order from highest to lowest, meaning 14, then 7, then three in the case of this trick. If you had multiple of the same rank, as you see here, we have three threes. They are instead resolved in suit order, starting with nobles and working your way down to peasants. So here, are noble, clergy, townsfolk. After the final trick is played and collected, the end of round effects trigger, and then end of round scoring. This can be done player by player to ensure accuracy of scoring and allow for a narrative if desired, or to speed up play when players have become familiar with the game, scoring can be performed simultaneously. And for easy reference, it's done in the order shown here on the player board. First is the royal execution. Each monarch has this execution symbol. This only occurs if the monarch is still alive at the end of the 12 tricks. The monarch must now execute one card in any player's tableau. So for instance, she might execute the plowman in her own tableau. Next is end of round scoring. First, you'll collect end of round taxes, in which case you will score one money for each living card in the Catholic pile. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that'd be eight money. It's important to realize that the amount of money on each card is irrelevant for this scoring. If this was round two, then it would be the number of cards in the neutral pile. And if it was round three, the number of cards in the Protestant pile. If at this point, for any reason, you have less than zero money, you must take a loan. And we'll talk about that shortly. Next in end of round scoring is collect the end of round piety. In this case, you score exactly one piety for each card in each of the Catholic and Protestant piles, and you score for that type of piety. So in this case, we've got two Protestant and eight Catholic. Next is repay a loan, which you can do for five money. Next, you'll score victory points based on your roll card in each of the following categories. The first is suits. Again, just follow along here. So for George, in round one, he would get one victory point for every two peasants. 
And then you can see in round two, it changes to clergy, and then it stays with clergy in round three. Next are guild members. So if there is at least one guild member in your living piles here, then you have one victory point in any of the three rounds. Then if you have the most or equal to the most guild members, you get an additional point in the first two rounds and three points in the final round. You look at the deceased Catholics, minus one point in the first round for each deceased Catholic, one point in the second round for each dead Catholic, and negative two victory points in the third round for each dead Catholic. And then for each deceased Protestant, two points, two points, and two points. One thing to keep in mind, by the way, I know that's kind of difficult to read. This is all prototype and those sorts of things will be straightened out by the time the final product rolls around. This green scoring bar is only for end game scoring. Once all end of round scoring is complete, if it is not the final round, of course, repeat the process as explained earlier to begin a new round. Gathering up all the cards, including the ones previously set aside, shuffling them all up, dealing out 35 more cards for a three player game, adding Queen Elizabeth the first to the mix and removing Queen Mary, and then dealing out the new cards. So let's talk about the score sheet for a second. As you score points for Protestants, Catholics, and money, you can keep a running tally in these three columns. Whenever your totals reach a full multiple of 10, mark the respective pennant down here. Pennants will not be lost if the total drops below that amount. End of round scoring is kept track here. You have your total for your suits, the total for your guild members, and the total for your dead. And then total them all together here. These boxes are just here to help you remember to collect your piety and taxes. And then down at the bottom, you're able to accumulate your end of game scores. After all three rounds are played and scored, finish the game by applying the end of game scoring, which is found in the green box at the bottom of your roll. In the case of George, you'll score extra victory points for your Catholic piety equal to four victory points times the highest multiplier pennant. And then with the uh, Protestant here, you'll have negative four points times the multiplier. And then with money, one point times the multiplier. That's why it's important to keep track of these pennants and remember not to remove them when your money or piety drops below that amount. In the case that you never reached any of these pennants, so in other words, you didn't get at least 10 at any point in time, then your multiplier is zero, which means you don't score any points for that particular value. To be clear, you're multiplying it by the number of pennants you've checked off, not by the number inside the pennant. So if I only had one pennant checked off, then I would multiply it times one, not by 10. Also, at the end of the game, if you have a loan token, score minus three victory points. Once all of the scoring is done, the player with the most victory points is the winner. If players are tied, the winner is the one who has... If players are tied, the winner is the one with the highest combined piety. In the unlikely event the winners are still tied, it's a joint win. So throughout this video, we've touched on how some of the effects work, but let's just run through each of them one more time. The Royal Execution is an end of round, not end of trick effect, that targets and kills one card on any player's tableau. Only the Monarch has this, and so this means that the only way for this effect to take effect is if the Monarch is still alive at the end of the round. This is Collect Taxes. The player will collect the money value of each living card in the trick of the specified type. So in this case, the player would collect two, three, five money. If there is no specified type mentioned on the card, then the player would collect from all the cards in the trick. It should also be noted that some clergy will actually have negative amounts on their card. This is Collect Piety. The player will collect the piety value of each living card in the trick of the specified type. In this case, it's the peasants and the nobility. So if this were to lay out, the player would collect a total of eight piety. If there is no specified type mentioned on the card, then the player would collect from all living cards in the trick. When scoring the piety, you must distinguish between Protestant and Catholic piety. During round two, 
when there is no prevailing religion, a card like this will not score any piety. This is Condemn. This targets the card of the specified religion with the lowest piety in the trick. So if this is what the trick looked like, then this card would target this one. If the targeted piety is lower than the condemning card's piety, the target is killed. However, in this case, you can see that the targeting card has three and the targeted card has five, and so nothing happens. If the targeted card is lower than the condemning card's piety, then the target is killed. If the piety is the same or higher, then there is no effect. In this case, you can see the condemning card has three piety and the target has five, and so nothing will happen. This is Convert. Convert targets the card of the specified religion with the lowest piety. In this case, it's targeting a Protestant, and in round one or two, this would be the only Protestant in the trick. If the piety of the targeted card is lower than the converting card's piety, the target is converted and is moved to the new affiliations area. So in this case, we have a piety of five trying to convert piety of one, and so it is converted. And so when this card is placed in the player's area, it will go into the Catholic pile instead of the Protestant pile. This is kill. This effect kills the listed number of the specified cards. In this case, it will target Catholics and it's going to kill one. So the player could choose to kill either this Catholic or this Catholic. Remember, whenever a card is killed, it moves to the appropriate deceased stack. Also, be sure to always pay attention to any number underneath an effect, which indicates the number of cards that can be affected by this effect. If there is no number, then it will affect all relevant cards. If at the end of any scoring section, including an end of trick score, your money falls below zero, you must take out a loan. Take a loan card to indicate that you've received a loan and then return your money total to one. You may only take one loan card per round, no matter how indebted you are. If you wish to return the loan cards, you must repay five gold per loan card during a future end of round scoring phase, and you may pay several off at once. However, if you still have a loan card at the end of the game, you will subtract three victory points from your final score. And that's how you play Tolerance. Be sure to go check this out over on its crowdfunding campaign. There's a link in the description below to get you over there. From the same company that makes Tolerance, we have our instructional series for Perdition's Mouth. Part one and two are already out. Part three will be coming out soon. We also have how to play Aeon Trespass Odyssey, how to play Frosthaven, and how to play Australia coming up soon as well. Be sure to check all that out. Go over to the Tolerance crowdfunding campaign and see if that's something you want to get involved with. And until next time, if you're bored online, board offline.